Hello everyone, uh, I'm Arnie Ken, President of Vertical Measures, and welcome to another monthly hangout that uh, we host periodically, actually monthly. Uh, and today I have three guests on. They're already making fun of me before we went live, so we'll see how this goes. So uh, I'm going to let them each spend uh, maybe a sentence or two to introduce themselves, and then we're going to get right to the question. So uh, why don't you take it away, Corey? Sure, I'm Corey Post. I'm Vice President of Marketing for Shoebox.com. We help users digitize their documents for taxes and bookkeeping. Great. And uh, Pat? My name is Pat Strader. I'm with Digital Relativity. We are a digital marketing agency located in the New River Gorge in West Virginia. Todd? My name is Todd Hartley. I'm the CEO of Wirebuzz, and we're a content marketing agency uh, in Scottsdale, Arizona. All right. Awesome. Thank you. So uh, by now, hopefully people have looked at the title of this. They know why they're here, but it's going to be all about creating content uh, from fans and followers. So I'm going to ask each of the guests uh, one question, uh, get an answer out of them, and if we have time, uh, we'll follow up maybe with some tips. So the question is, I'm just going to read it right off, and, and we'll start with Corey. Uh, can you give a great example of having fans or users help creating compelling content? Yeah, sure, absolutely. Uh, contests are a great way that I found. We actually ran a contest for Pinterest where users could upload photos of their messy desk because we help users get organized um, and have other users vote. And we had about 200 pieces of content or images submitted um, and thousands of repins. It really kind of helped spread our message and create a great user experience for people. Yeah, Pinterest is a great, great tool, as most of us know these days. Yep, super. Uh, Pat, go ahead. I know you've got a great one about beer. Yeah, yeah. Uh, beer and mountain bikes are two uh, things that are very important to me. And uh, a great example from one of the uh, larger craft brewers in the United States, uh, New Belgium Brewing Company, uh, not too long ago they, they launched a campaign that was called uh, Enjoy the Ride. And it, this was a great example of encouraging people to create content. Um, and it really revolved around a lot of the things that are the um, the values of their company, if you will. You know, they encouraged people to take photos of themselves on the trail, um, after the trail, enjoying a, a beer. Um, and they used the hashtag, enjoy the ride. Um, and people were loading pictures into Instagram, um, posting them on Facebook, uh, lots of different things. And, and the result of the contest was pretty, pretty amazing. And this, these results were just published not too long ago. Um, in the Brewers Association's uh, trade magazine. And they increased their Twitter followers by 10,000 uh, over the course of this campaign. They in increased their Facebook fans uh, by 50,000. And there was more than 2,000 pictures um, posted to Instagram that used that tag. So um, we work with a lot of craft brewers. We do not work with New Belgium, but this was a, a, just a great example that I think was uh, perfect for this. For this. Yeah, super, yeah. Beer always helps, right? And I saw Todd gave it the thumbs up, so <laughs> must be a fan of the beer. That's right. All right, so Todd, why don't you give us uh, one of your examples? Well, we started a breast cancer awareness campaign called Breast Cancer Answers, and what we did is we did a series of interviews with leading experts around the country and then gave the audience the opportunity to suggest our next interview topic. Uh, the net result over one year is 6.4 million video views, but what we had was a very steady stream of questions coming in from patients and loved ones all over the country, and they'd come in regularly, and then the, that, the content that we received would then be, or the questions we'd received would then be our next content that we would develop. So in one year, we created about 650 video clips for that campaign, and uh, each question is its own clip, and they're all, you know, accessible. So what we did is we really drived audience demand to create our library. Great. And uh, you have uh, doctors actually answering those questions. Is that right? I'm yeah, not sure we if it's always a doctor. Or how? Yeah, it's um, not always a doctor, but probably about ninety percent are doctors. But then we got uh, also patients and survivors to answer questions, tips, tricks. So what we did is we just really uh, creamed the crop of all the most important questions that the audience, our target audience, was looking for. Hmm. Excellent. Excellent. Love that one. So, Corey, uh, I found you online uh, based on a blog post you had written. I, I, I think it was a blog post or an article. Uh, I don't remember the publication anymore. Um, do you remember what, what that was about? 
Yeah, sure. So I wrote it for Kissmetrics um, and outlined our contest. Um, and one of the things that we found, I mean, the goal, what we really loved about doing a contest for user-generated user content is it really engaged people um, and drew them in both to our brand and to work with other users. And, and it just created a great community and, and it was a really fun experience through which to create content. So out of that, I'm, I'm going to ask you each for a, maybe a tip or a trick uh, for people to help uh, increase engagement, but do you have any one or two uh, tips that just really seem to work well to, to get it to work? Yeah, absolutely. I feel like it's really good to have the content creation related to your brand in a fun manner, of course. So, for example, we help people get organized. That's why we chose uh, Messy Desk. So anything that both relates to the brand helps provide a solution for people but also creates an interesting experience for people, I think is a win-win all around. Yeah, excellent, Cora. And Pat, how about you? Any great tips? Well, it, it kind of keeping in line with the, the example that I gave uh, surrounding the hashtag is just to really own the hashtag. Um, and in the, in the example of the, f the photos being uploaded to Instagram, making use of tools like Statagram, um, but now just the other day, uh, as many of you know, they announced the desktop version of Instagram that allows you to follow those um, hashtags closely and interact with people because the more that you interact with them, um, the more that other people will see it and the more likely that they will be to um, share content themselves. Super. And I, 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 this is like a speaker faux pas here. I don't want to put you on the spot. But uh, when you and I were on a panel together at PubCon, I think it was, you did talk a little bit about the iPod thing. <laughs> Am I putting you yeah, on the spot? Well, Do we and, talk about that a little bit? No. No, and that's, a, that's something that we, um, that we use with folks to generate content themselves and, and in turn to help um, you know, create the impetus for their, their fans to, to generate content. And that is just a, a simple iPod touch um, that's loaded with all of the, you know, the standard fare of Instagram and Hootsuite. And now um, maybe you'll start to see Vine, for example, to be posted on that. And so that the folks, um, you know, have a, a mobile dashboard, if you will, that they can carry with them, create content on the fly, um, and again, we're the folks that we work with, adventure travel, craft brewers, and those types of things, uh, they're, they're moving around quite a bit, and there's a lot of action taking place. So that, that tool enables them to create uh, content quickly and share it very easily. Yeah, super. Great. Uh, and Todd, how about you? How about a, a big tip for engagement? Well, what we did is is we then we put together a list of who the big key influencers are in the breast cancer space. I'll use this example because I started off with it. So who's really got the largest audience? And on Facebook, on Twitter, on Google Plus, and then we developed a, a relationship where we went in and interviewed them and created little short series and then gave them back the content. Now the value of giving them back the content is they then want to go out and market it and create awareness for their tips and tricks and as a result it drove a ton of traffic and very strategic links back to us. We do that with um, with survivors, we do it with organizations, uh, .edus and .govs as our um, as our links in uh, come into us then we've got an increased searchable footprint and value and the net result of it, it you know, it shows Google that we're developing relationships with the really important movers and shakers in the industry. So that's been a really nice and still to this day some of our our highest traffic comes from key advocates or key influencers on social. So I, you know, I, I think that's a really good tip. Look to see who can do your biggest marketing for you. Who already has an audience? promote them, tap into their audience, and then their audience will learn about you by default. Yeah, super. Great. All right, well, that's all the time we have for uh, this month's episode. Uh, I want to thank Corey, Pat, and Todd. Thanks very much for your time. Really, really appreciate it. Thanks, and Arnie. we look forward to seeing all of you. Uh, again, I'm Arnie Ken with Vertical Measures, and we'll be back next month. Thank you.